What's up, dudes? Welcome back to another episode of Ramas Men's Team. Uh, pretty simple. We are a group of guys helping each other make progress towards each other's goals. If you're new to the channel, awesome and welcome. If you want to help support the channel and join our pro team, head over to ramasteam.com slash pro, where you can contribute to us on a donation basis. We also give you access to exclusive content, mastermind groups, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, hope you enjoy this episode and we'll see you on the team. Mr. Ray, what's up, brother? Hey, man, you know, um, life is always good, man. Um, living sober, um, not getting enough sleep, not getting enough fitness, not eating healthy enough, um, not meditating enough, not reviewing my vision board enough. I got to do that right now, dude. But other than that, like, like, I, like, you know, like I still have a supremely blessed life, you know? And, uh, we were just talking about how for both of us, the, um, now my vision board is tattered because I look at it so much. Heck yeah. Um, our scorecard has kind of like, um, fallen off the priority list in the last week or two, hasn't it? Oh yeah. My, my scorecard is like literally complete garbage. My life, my life right now is the, the pure definition of lopsided, like working 15, 16 hours a day. Um, for the last couple of weeks, uh, some days, normal days, like eight, eight, 10 hours, something like that. But the majority of the days, 15, 16 hours, like a hundred percent lopsided. Um, same. Like, um, I am moving into my mom's basement, which is currently, um, rented out by rats and cockroaches. So oh, I need to like, there needs to be a negotiation to get them to a new apartment and then uh you know move in there so that um so that's taking up a lot of my bandwidth plus trying to work plus trying to you know um trying to serve god instead of serving the devil you know so like um yeah things are a bit lopsided on my end too larry how the hell are you <laughs> larry what's i up, am brother? doing well Thank you. It's good to see you guys. You too, brother. I apologize that I haven't uh, been present, but I am now and uh, looking forward to to catching up and hearing what uh, what's going on. And from what I jumped into, it sounds like uh, the <clears throat> the ditch has gotten a little deep. <laughs> sure, sure it has. But um, and like we know that a strong personal program is the best safeguard. Um in uh against getting your face rubbed in the bottom of that ditch uh and uh but we're both grown up enough to say that you know we know that's the case and we have we, we have not been kind of um observing that wisdom right wes yeah i mean probably a good theme for today uh just because uh it seems like we're both going through this and larry i don't know if you can relate um i am definitely a big believer in 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 holistic performance, balance, et cetera. Uh, but I was telling Ray before we hopped on my, my life right now is so unbelievably not balanced, uh, 15, 16 hours a day working. Um, and I love it. Like, this is not a complaint. Uh, just as a little side note, I cannot stand when people use vanity metrics around business, especially, especially, Oh, I work so much. It's like who cares? Right. Like you, you get to, in my personal opinion, you get to work, right? Like, and the work that I'm doing, I'm not digging ditches. So this is not a complaint. Uh, I will say though, that my scorecard has suffered dramatically. Uh, and my biology is, uh, is saying like, you know, you're not digging looks, ditches. It but... looks, you look like garbage, Wes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can, you, can you please turn off your video? <laughs> yeah. My biology is saying, dude, like, you know, it's, uh, we're it's reminding me of here. my New York days sort of a thing. So, yeah. but, um, but sometimes in my opinion, like, like, you know, you either, you make hay while the sun shines and if you don't, right, then, then you don't, right. Then you don't get, then you don't make the hay. So, uh, so that's kind of what's going on, Larry, what are your thoughts on, on balance and perhaps at some points being uh, not so balanced? Well, I think balance is overrated to begin with. I think it's relative. Um, sometimes you got to work. And I mean, and I, and I use work in the sense of you got to get a lot of stuff done in a short period of time. And pretty soon you realize that you've been doing that for a, a while now. 
Mm-hmm. And when it's there's consequences that aren't uh, lined up with what your big your full picture is, then you have to take a look at those and you know start making different priorities important uh, if you're going to break away. Other than just doing a sabbatical, which some people they just work 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 and then they just do nothing, and and that's a real inconsistent behavior. Brain loves predictability. Uh, Yet it will, like you said, it, you let it go and it'll roll for you um, until you say, you know, hey, hey, what, how can I make this better for myself? You know, how can I how can I do these 16 hours and still be, stay in shape, still, you know, provide great nutrition for myself and all of those other elements and have, you know, have some socialization. Um, and it's amazing you know as well as I do, both of you, that if you put it in there, you'll find a way to pull it off. Hmm. And 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 sometimes it's well, this is more important than that, relative to what. And that's always our frame of reference. And so I guess Wes, I would ask you, what is this guiding north star for you? What is relative to what for you, so that you know that I need to change. I need to make a an adjustment in the course I'm on. Yeah. So for me, it's always, uh, and she would kill me if she, uh, knew how to use a computer. It could see this. So this is my grandmother. She's on my, on my iPhone. Okay. Um, okay. so th- this was, uh, this was years and years ago. And the picture is, um, I couldn't, I didn't have enough money cause I plowed so much money back into the business. I didn't have enough money to buy her a beach chair. Um, and she's got a bum knee sort of a thing. So, and she's a trooper, so like she didn't complain one bit. But on this particular day, uh, I didn't have enough money to buy her a beach chair, and we were on the beach. And then her flight got changed um, that particular day. Like I just learned, like after I like I was going through it, like borderline in tears on the beach. I then get a phone call um, from my mom telling me that her flight changed from Orange County to LAX, and I own I had a hair's worth of gas in the gas tank and I couldn't afford gas. So I'm like sitting there, I'm like, how the, this is like one of those universe things. I'm like, this is not going to work. So I'm just like, I don't give a shit if I break down on the way back, but please do not let me break down on the way on the way there. So like the 16 hours a day is not hard. Like I just look at this constantly. That's why it's Dude, on my, this is uh, like, this is like the Hanukkah oil that burned for eight days in the Old Testament, man. <laughs> like you were literally, you were literally driving on fumes, eh? Dude, dude, and like, and in traffic, yeah, right to and from. Somehow I got like literally round trip. Like to this day, no idea how. Like just the math does not make sense. Yeah, the answer so, is it was and, in that lecture. So, yeah. How long ago did this happen? Uh, that was that was. Uh, a little under 11 years ago. 11 years. That's a long time to burn oil. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And hold on, Larry. Like, so what if I looked at this as Wes shaming himself that he was a bad son and he has to, like, he's forever in the karmic shadow of this day, which grandma probably remembers as a great day that she got to spend with her favorite grandson, right? Like, what, yeah. like, um, when I was and desperately would be feeling terrible if she knew yeah, what he if she used the computer had gone yeah. through. But yeah. like <laughs> um you know a, a, an artist that I work with who I'm working with right now when I was desperately desperately trying to find a home for her show she said and I've mentioned this before she said don't lose yourself in the process right? Mm. Um mm-hmm. that comes to mind when I think of Wes burn like working burning the minute oil just to continue the the metaphor at work and then also the way he kind of like the way this um this negative experience fuels him right i'm not sure he's at risk of losing himself in the process but what do you think of all that well i i i know have you ever ever pulled a dog out of the water a little dog and it's its feet are still going (laughs) <laughs> you know, that's kind that's of what, how I visualize the West right now is, <laughs> yeah. is he's got something to prove. Yeah. And it's not to his grandmother. 
No. And I, th- I think that's where the real important thing to remember is, is, is wh- who am I doing this for? And, you know, I think that's great that, you know, that he has done what he's done, but sometimes it's like someone who needed to lose 50 pounds and now they've lost a hundred and they still look in the mirror and think they're overweight. And, uh, you know, when he reaches 20 million in the bank or 200 million, um, you know, unless unless the reason behind why he's doing what he's doing shifts, um, that will always be the the measurement. And it'll he'll never be you'll never be enough. You'll never quite make it. And and I know intellectually that you get all that. Mm -hmm. And that, you you know, you read voraciously and, and you, you know, you read the right stuff. And and yet you've got such a huge blind spot to what we all want for you. And that is for Wes to take care of Wes because we yeah. love you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. we don't, you right? And, yeah. Or to and love yet, himself as much as we love him or to like um, to cherish himself as much as we cherish him, right? Yeah. And I, and I think knowing Wes, Wes, you'd say, well, I do, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still, you know, I I think that becomes rationalization. I I, I do. I tick that box. It's right here on my (laughs) daily (laughs) daily operating system. Yeah. Yeah. You got to, you know, most of us have about seven boxes. You've got 7,000 boxes and, (laughs) and, you know, you're upset when you miss one. So, I think the drive is a wonderful thing. I think your your tenaciousness, your resiliency. Um, but again, at what cost? And uh, you're the only one that can answer that. And, you know, you you're going to do what you need to do. Just just remember, there's there's more than just your grandma out there who who cares about you. And um and also needs your nurturing as well while you're building a business. And and I think that you'll find, again, do you remember, you f- familiar with Buckminster Fuller at all? Mm-hmm. Yes. Beauty of the Gnomes, okay. well, all that stuff. M- yeah. More, his, his whole concept was is more with less. Mm-hmm. And, and, and what that means is, is, you know, you got to figure out how to do twice what you're doing now and half the time with twice the fun. And, and the way you figure that out is you, is you change what the outcome is that you're going after. In, 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 and what I mean by that is instead of giving yourself six months to pull it off, you behave as if it's pulled off. You don't try to give yourself one month to pull it off because you'll kill yourself. You know, so it's a conceptual shift in what drives us intrinsically. And and when you examine that, uh, you re- you ask yourself, is doing what I'm doing in my best interest? And if it's no, I can't do this, I can't do that. OK, well, how do I do that instead of OK, important point instead of how do I do that? is what does what do i feel like now that i've done that larry um uh, and wes yeah. you will get a chance to talk um but <laughs> to, the question, no, no, no. to the question that wes should ask himself who am i doing this for should the answer be myself is that the best answer well you know, if you really get into spirituality, if you're not if you're not about yourself, you're you're denying everything you've been given. You're denying the opportunity to to give back, to pay back, to be grateful, to to share this wonderful gift that we had. It's not about sacrifice. I mean, that's such a misnomer that I'll sacrifice my way to heaven or to a better life, and life's a struggle and all. To, that that is just it's it's it, it's ignorance. It's uh, it's manipulation. It's it's a limiting belief, and it's not what the universe is conspiring for us. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's so far superior and divine to what we ever give it credit for. So we we look at these little ideologies and we try to wrap ourselves around that because it's easier to understand. And and so this is the 
the bottom line here is quit trying to figure out how and start owning the end outcomes that you want. Now, you remember Covey, he said, start with the end in mind. That, that was close. But what we're really talking about is, is own it now. Own the fact that you have a fulfilling life, Wes, and it's not and just you are about successful. how much money you can make. Own that. Own that you're the healthy mother, you know what. And then what happens is when you get evidence that doesn't match that, you don't say, oh, I got to do this for my grandma. You know, I will never be in that situation again. I mean, th that was a heavy, heavy experience in, in your life that imprinted such a dominant need to succeed that you lost your sense of perspective on how to channel that. You know, you're just writing it. And, and, and man, I'm telling you, you're a great writer. Wes, <clears throat> well, about how much we love you and how, and how yeah. we feel about you. And, and no, no, I appreciate all this. Uh, definitely. Um, the what happened in that particular moment was it was. Uh, you know how they say, like, you can bump into trauma wounds, like when you're going through it with your spouse or something like that. So at that point in my life, I was I was good. I was supposed to be completely good. I had already gone through my, you know, my uh, leg on Wall Street, et cetera. And then when I came out here to build a business, one of my pieces of my personality that I just accept is is pretty extreme. You know, it's like very binary. You're either all in or you don't even try, you know. Um, so uh, so when I came out here, um, I had a bunch of money saved up. It's like, OK, now my new focus is to grow this business. So then we just went all in on that. And, uh, and then when this happened and I didn't care, like, like, it's like, uh, I'm happy to burn everything down right in the, in the expectation that it'll let a new forest grow. And if it doesn't grow, doesn't grow, that's fine. But I'd rather be able to look at my future son and say, you know, you should go all in on things. And if he were to ask me, I, it's like, okay, here's the 55 things that I did in the last handful of years that went all in on. Um, what I, I did not anticipate was that particular thing happening where my extreme uh, uh, bets would impact my core team. And my core team at that time was purely like my mom and my grandma, you know, like, uh, and my, and, uh, yeah, my mom and my grandma um, at that time. Uh, so that's what I, it was just like collateral damage that I did not anticipate. And I was like, okay. Like, this is a problem. So, and then honestly, uh, it serves me, you know, um, but it, it, at times it can get out of hand. Uh, so that's kind of yeah. where we are. Well, you, you know, you made a, a powerful statement about my son will, will look at me and understand what it means to be all in. And, you know, my dad had three businesses and I didn't really get to spend any time with him until I was 14 years old. Hmm. Because he was he he was showing me what it was like to be all in, and and I think that it's important that we. I really believe you can have your cake and eat it too. I, I really believe you can. I think it's a misnomer that it's pick and choose. I think that you don't challenge yourself when you just go in one lane, and you just work 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 work, and and you don't also become an amazing social creature, an amazing athletics, you know, opportunities to um, participate. And, and, and all of these things just make that effort, that drive of yours even more enhancing. And, and you begin to open up to new opportunities that you couldn't see before because the, the blinders that we put on, remember, if I ask you to look for red, you're not looking for green. You know, I mean, it's all you see now is red. And that's, that's just a, a, a skill set that we need to develop, you know, which we didn't need to when the brain was designed. I mean, it was just listening for the fear all around us so that we could stay alive. But now that we're beyond that, I mean, now what does it mean to stay alive and, and thrive? So I know this is temporary, Wes, what you're going through. I'm, I'm talking more globally. Mm -hmm. um, 
so that you realize, you know, is your are you going to be able to spend any time with your son or is it going to be on Saturday from 11 in the morning to 1144? Mm. And then you got that box checked off. And and there's nothing wrong with living like that. It, as long as it's fulfilling um, that feeling in self that, you know, hey, this is working. So, yeah. no, I, I know something's got to change uh, there. And, and I could articulate all of the 50 things that are coming up and wanting to argue both of you. But but I know you're right. 100 yeah. percent right. Right. Like it's. it's- it makes yeah. me think of like the um, going from scarcity to abundance mindset, right? Uh, that's kind of what like we're talking about. So, Wes, I would challenge you to change your screensaver and still and feel like you're not dishonoring your grandmother or dishonoring your mission, right? Uh, for example, and it drives my family crazy, but I took a screenshot of my phone lock screen and you can see... It's just, it's a fantastic picture that someone took of me. Um, and I, can you see that? Yeah. Yeah. And isn't that glorious? And I look at that and I say to myself, who's the man? <laughs> okay. And what's wrong? Is your low key way of asking me to put you on my screensaver? Is that a <laughs> better idea for starters? <laughs> there you we go. Can do this. There you go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and like, um, and hey, I'm no spiritual giant. I'm just saying like, um, yeah, I'm just, um, just one brother to another, as you say. Um, you could try doing things my way. It might completely derail the whole operation. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know, but it'll be, uh, you know, like, I don't know if you're going to get twice as much done using half as much. But you're going to have twice as much fun. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate that. And for the for the guys listening who perhaps have a similar uh, flavor of the equivalent of body dysmorphia in a certain area of life. I think um, I think um, Larry said denying self, mm. and, which I think is like, a, right, like denying self or not putting yourself first. Right. Mm. Yeah, I think one of the themes that all of us have is is trying to find a way to feel worthy. And that we feel deserving of this, you know, and and we look at these pictures, you know, with our arms raised out there and it's looking like a stud muffin and and uh and then we go, but but if they only knew. And and, you know, that, that we got to stifle that if they only knew, if they only knew what, that we're human and we made some mistakes and, and, you know, sometimes that cost people prison time. But, you know, there was a, uh, I think it was the, it, it wasn't the Pope, it was some individual high up in clergy that went to a prison and he said, you know, the only difference between you and I, you got caught. And I think that's such a powerful, ah, deep breath kind of thing that what am I running away from instead of what am I accomplishing along the way? And, and, and when I am with another human being, do I leave them better off than when I, before I got there? And the you guys are all like, about that. Yeah, so that's the problem. Like, like, that's why, in a way, it's hard to give Wes like a proper intervention because he already does that. Like he already lived. Okay. I guess what the, the problem is. It's the problem for Wes is the opposite. He gives so much to others. He lives to serve others. Our intervention is about who's taking care of Wes. Yeah. 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 Well, I think you nailed it too. When you said he needed it, I just tweak it a bit said he needed to take the grandmother off of his Screensaver without feeling like he, he dishonors to, her. He right. needs to leave her, but add others on yeah. Yeah, other yeah, yeah, pictures, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Like so like, that when like, he does, yeah. Like Larry, for example, a range of pictures that act better, more accurately describes his loving relationship with her. Yeah, yeah. Wes, so Wes, what are your thoughts? Tell me what you think. 
I think Larry's jockeying for a position on the screensaver too. I think that's what's going on. I got to send this. I got to send this. <laughs> um, uh, no, I look, I, like I said, I completely agree with you guys. Uh, I, I for sure can tell you that if I was being super honest and this is not some sort of humble brag, mm-hmm. um, the first time I heard something that's similar to whatever bug is in my brain was when I watched um, uh, the last dance, the whole Chicago Bulls, Michael Jordan, such and such documentary um, where my, they said Michael Jordan would make up things to get his like saliva glands going and ready for murder. Like he would let us make up stories and then tell people those stories. Like, oh, this guy said this thing and I'm going to show him sort of a thing, you know, um, and that he the would manufacturing admit, he, the, yeah, the yeah, rage yeah. to shovel that coal rage coal into the furnace and, and get. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and burn baby burn. Yeah. And I could tell you uh, that was the first time I've ever heard that. And the first time I've heard it spoken out loud and I've done that in the past. You felt seen, you felt heard. Yeah. 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 Well, so, and, and He's telling my it, story. The reason I say it is because, uh, I can tell you for sure the answer in my head always it's one word and it's always more mm-hmm. like more, 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 more like that. That is 100%. Um, my answer all the time. Uh, I'm not saying that's healthy, but I'm saying that that is for sure the reality. And I will say, I think there's a certain probability. I know how the story ends. I could also tell you that I love the game, like absolutely love that's the game. The thing. That's yeah. the thing, Wes. Like, and that's what I'm having trouble with too, gentlemen, is like, I am like, I'm under so much pressure to get a, like a job at a bank or something for my wife who very reasonably wants her husband to contribute the maximum amount or even the minimum amount to the family. Right. But like, like, um, I, I'm not sure if I'm like, uh, following God or following Satan by putting my needs first and what I want first. You know what I mean, Wes? Like, Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure you have some kind, you would have some kind of similar, like, um, spiritual discomfort if you stopped putting everyone else first. Or stopped like that satanic drive to succeed. Like there'd be, there'd probably be an adjustment period. Yeah. Yeah. If you could imagine, if you ever spoken with somebody who, who was like a product of the depression, Mm -hmm. like they are different, you know, they they are, you know, um, bro, Sarah's grandpa said, Ray, why are you flushing the toilet every time? Yeah. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah. Literally. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I like, and you go and talk to people who've been, who, who have enough of a feel, a sting from that. You yeah. can't change them. Right. Like, like at least that's my, my that's personal trauma, perception. Baby. So, uh, so I went through, like I went through my own version of depression when I was a kid. And so it's like, I can see it. And I really appreciate what Larry's saying. It's like Wes intellectually knows, right. It's like, I, I'm looking at it through a glass. So just on the table, it's like, yeah, I know what's going on. Uh, but for some reason, like that switch cannot, I've tried many times, talk to many therapists, talk to many different people. Um, and almost because they put their hand on that switch and I slapped their hand off of it. I'm like, get mm-hmm. off my switch. <laughs> you know, that's the fuel brother. So, I know. so yeah, that's what's going on. Stop siphoning my fuel. Yeah. 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 You I, know, I, are, you, are you familiar with channeling Wes? Yeah. I channel my rage on, uh, every single day, my friend. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, well, you, except for you this just, one hour. <laughs> yeah, take, yeah, yeah. Take that. Take all of that drive and energy, and no matter whether it's from you know the depressing experiences or or abundance, it doesn't matter. It's it, it's going to drive you anyway. But the outcomes are different, and mm-hmm. the and the journey is different. Um, and, you know, it's kind of like Einstein and I've shared, I think I've shared this before, you know, he said, there's only one question you have to ask yourself. Is everything a miracle or are there no miracles? He said, that's the only question you have to ask yourself. And he goes, and don't look for evidence first before you make the decision. That's where people blow it. Hmm. He said, but once you decide everything's a miracle, that's all you'll see. 
once you decide there are none, that's all you'll see. And so it's not about you can't change this or people from the depression can't change their mind about the experience they had. Of course they can't. That's an experience that they had that's going to serve them either well or it's going to serve them poorly. So the the key then is to ask yourself, what do I want this drive to do for me and my life? And and rather than setting all these goals, and this is where we get caught up, all of our training has been set that if you want to accomplish something, you got to put it out there. If you can put a time frame on it, great. If you can monitor it daily by the moment, we, we all understand the methodology. Mm-hmm. And then we say, well, the difference is those that follow it and those that don't. Well, now let's get into quantum physics a little bit. Let's talk about how a molecule can be in more places at the same time than one. And and that is difficult for us to fathom because we compare ourselves to can I be in more places at the same time than where I am right now? And the answer is you already are. So the the reality then is, okay. well, how do I want to show up in those realities? Well, you're driving to make all this money, Wes. You can either be be doing it so that you're never in scarcity or you can do it because you love abundance. And I, and I think those are overused. You can do it to look for the opportunity within that moment to, to not only be doing it for someone else, but then what am I receiving from that while I'm doing it? Mm. So that you're not exhausted after the 16 to 18 hours. And even though you go, yeah, but I love that exhaustion. I mean, that exhaustion fuels me. (laughs) And so what you're really saying is, I don't give a what you say. I want to continue this, whether it's good for me or not. Mm -hmm. And then maybe when I crash, maybe then I'll take a look at it. But right now, I haven't crashed. Well, I don't know if that's the best philosophy in the world. Mm -hmm. Um, I think you need to continue to drive. We're not trying to change the drive. You're not trying. Why, Why try to change something so miraculous? How many of us listening would love to have just a little tiny bit of that as opposed to, okay, I think it's time to rest now. Well, now that I'm resting, maybe Mm -hmm. I'd have something to drink or maybe there's something to eat. I know it's not good for me, but I'll just have it this one time. Mm. And, you know, I haven't binged for a long time. What's on Netflix? And, and, you know, nothing wrong with that either. It's a choice. But by God, if you're going to if you're going to eat that, enjoy every single morsel of it. Don't gulp it down and feel guilty because you ate it at four in the morning. So nobody would see that you're not following your nutrition plan. Quit lying to ourselves. And and Wes, you're good. And I, I and the both of you am blessed that I've had the opportunity to meet both of you because yeah. you're so honest and you're so much into making this short time that we have in this thing called life as monumentous as we can. And then be careful that the drivers aren't some historic element that we got driven to our brain that doesn't serve us any longer. Mm. God damn, because Larry, that's we're the lucky we ones, shift. man. We're the lucky ones, dude. And uh, first of all, I love you. And thank you for sharing your wisdom with us today and every day that you're here. I love what you said about Einstein and miracles. And I'm not sure if you said it before, but you can repeat that as many damn times as you want. Once you decide there are miracles, that's all you'll see. And once you decide there are no miracles, that's all you see. Well, Mm. I would prefer to walk around thinking I'm surrounded by miracles, you know? and like Yeah, that's a great quote. I just thought of um, the fact that I got to sell, I get to sell art and talk about art is a miracle. Like, like the fact that I have work that is spiritually fulfilling, like Wes said, and not digging ditches or whatever is a miracle. I choose like that. And that really like, that really captures it in terms of like, um, if I'm in an argument with someone who maybe doesn't see the thing eye to eye, it's like, look, it, like I, I rubbed a lamp and a genie came out and I asked him to give me the job that I love that's spiritual fulfilling. And he granted me that wish, you know, and that's like, and, um, uh, that's how special and, it is, you know, and stay open along the way. 
mm-hmm. to to be doing something as well. So mm-hmm. your partner is is not struggling with the, with the challenge of well, when's he going to contribute. Mm-hmm. Um, do it all. Find yeah. a way to you know to be open to go. You know, yeah, I could do that four hours a day. You know, I I don't have to give up what I'm doing and then and then bring these other elements to the party so that she's saying thank you so much for caring enough about me, you know, to bring in an extra couple hundred bucks a week or or a day or, you know, a moment or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. She got to him, Ray. She got to him. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> i heard that text message ding a little earlier i was wondering no, what she, that put was. The, she put the chip she put the chip in them <laughs> no i'm speaking from experience bro i know i, I know, I know that's dude and no but i like what you mean like do it all like being a great provider and a great dad and a great husband doesn't have to come at the cost of doing what you love yeah right that's like that whole sacrifice kind of binary that you're throwing out the window yeah yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, this, this session has been awesome. Uh, thank you guys for uh, allowing me to vent a little bit and then also to give me uh, a mirror to look into in my own personal therapy session. Um, uh, I will, I'm going to, and for all the guys who need to hear this, uh, you know, consider taking the weekend for some personal care. Um, as much as it is uh, frustrating for me to say something like that, because literally as the words come out of my mouth, I'm like, the fuck does personal care mean? You know? Um, uh, <laughs> but for those of us who need to hear that, you know, go do something good for yourselves this weekend. Any, any parting words of wisdom from you gentlemen? Well, for me, Larry, you're the second best guy I know. And Wes, you are absolutely the best guy I know. And I love you, man. And what I know, Larry, thanks for saying that stuff to support his wife, because that that order would have been reversed a couple minutes ago. So, Larry, that's a jagged little pill for you to swallow, man. You know, I love you, too. But Wes is a fucking king. Right back at you, brother. All right, dudes. Love you guys. Have a great weekend. Thank you, sir. All right. Take care. Bye bye. Later.